What's up guys, welcome back to the Timbicon Turning channel and welcome to this, our first ever wood turning challenge series where I am being tasked to create various wood turning projects right here in the wood turning studio. Like any good challenge, the guys have set a couple of ground rules that I have to follow else I won't pass the final assessment. And for this first challenge, Dane and Colin have told me I need to make a segmented bowl with these following rules. It must be built completely in this room. There is strictly no use of the table saw or bandsaw. The showroom is open for business, so I suppose that means I can go shopping for tools or supplies during the build. And lastly, bonus points will be awarded for using hand tools. At the end of the build, my final piece will be judged by both Colin and Dane with standard turning judgment criteria. So that will be covering the turning itself, the finish, the originality, and finally, the difficulty. And then assuming that I pass all of that, our next challenge will be revealed. So that's a challenge, I'm definitely looking forward to it. It will be interesting with the whole no table saw thing, but I've definitely faced bigger challenges and I'm confident I can make this work. So it's the next day now and I've had a little bit of time to think about this and I think the first thing I need to do is machine all of our timber so that we've got two parallel faces and everything's a uniform thickness. That's just going to make my life easier. Now we haven't got anything in here that I can use but the shop's open so I'm going to go downstairs, pick up a few things and we'll get machine. All right, so these are the two machines that I've chosen to take from the showroom and uh, we're going to be using these to mention all of our timber. This little unit here is actually really cool. It's a brand new uh, product for us and it's a bench top jointer with cast iron tables and fence and it has a true spiral cutter head. We also have the bench top thicknesser and that too has a spiral cutter head. So everything that we do here should come out silky smooth and it shouldn't be too loud either. So what we're going to do here is we're going to flatten one face and then we're going to square up one edge. We'll do all the work pieces in one batch and then we'll switch over to the thicknesser. Because I can't use the table saw for this, I just need to get a little bit creative and do a few extra steps, but it's not too bad. For bringing the edges to be parallel, we're doing something that isn't the best practice, but because of the width to height ratio of this piece, I'm confident in doing so. So we're gonna run it through the thickness on edge, and that should bring our opposite face parallel, and we should be left with something that is square on all four sides. Typically, the way I would do this in my home workshop is to run it through the table saw, which, but because of the rules of the challenge means I can't use a table saw, I'm having to think a little bit creatively. Okay, so that is all of the timber machine, and honestly, I have no idea how much of this I'm going to need, uh, but I'm hoping this is enough. So the next thing I have to figure out is going to be how I cut the wedges and that. I need to think on it a little bit. I have a concept in my mind, but I need to put it through the test and try a few things out. And that concept is to use this saw guide, which is for a Japanese saw, and it just holds the saw to be nice and 90 degrees. Now, this is square and we need angled cuts, so I need to think about it a little bit. Uh, but that is the subject for the next video. Now, this isn't meant to be a review video of those benchtop machines at all, but I just have to say, you've got to look at the surface finish on these things. Those spiral cutter heads are insane. Anyway, that's it for this video. I will have a think on how I can do those wedges and we'll be back with a follow-up very shortly. Okay, I couldn't finish that video without showing you at least one segmented ring and this is it here. Now, this is a proof of concept, but I just wanted to show you guys the jig I came up with. So this is a little shooting board that I designed and cut out on a CNC. So we have to figure out a way of doing that by hand. But all this does is it gives us a straight reference for our work pieces to uh, reference against and then it kicks the jig at the correct angle for the 12 segment ring. So we just clamp that in place, we do a little stop block, and we come up with these little segments. Now this is CNC cut, so of course in the next video we've got to see if we can make this by hand here in the studio and get the same results. All right, that's it. We'll see you next time. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, comment, all of that sort of stuff, and we'll see you next time. I'm getting excited now.